Hey friend, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to walk you through Bravo Studio. Now I did do a video on Bravo Studio last year where I walked through the fundamentals and the basics of how to set up and create your own app. And this is kind of a part two of that video where I'm gonna show you some of the more recent features that Bravo Studio has implemented such as pop-ups and input fields and push notifications. I'm really excited to take you through what I've been working on in Bravo Studio. We'll jump into it. If you're new to Bravo Studio, it is a no code tool that lets you take your designs and turn it into a fully functioning mobile app. Yes, you can actually push it to the app store and use it for real. Now it can be a little bit tricky to get set up and there's a little bit of a learning curve, but don't worry, I'm gonna handhold you and walk you through exactly how to do this in this video. I do recommend watching the first video, which is more of a foundation of how to lay out your app and your designs to correctly sync it into Bravo Studio. We're gonna get into a bit more detail here into some specific features, but I got you. Okay, here is my app that I created, which is the same app as last time, my kombucha app. And here I have a nice navigation or like a menu item that slides in and out. On this featured page, I have different categories of kombucha and this is all being filled with data from a Google Sheet uh, where I put in the different categories and the different images. You can go over to favorites and you can see a list of kombuchas that I have favorited. And again, all of this data is coming from a Google Sheet. And some of the new things I've added is here in the submit, you can actually now submit your own kombucha, which I will consider for review to publish to my app. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I set up this input form and how what you fill into this input form actually gets sent to an Airtable document. Okay, here I am in my Figma file where you can see I have designed this kombucha app. And the first thing I wanna show you is how you can create different page states in Bravo. So maybe you have a loading page, maybe an error page or an empty state kind of page. So I wanted to create a custom loading state. So whenever there is data loading in my app or maybe a whole page is loading, instead of the default Bravo loading animation, I wanted to have my own animation. So I created a new page over here and I gave it the tag of loading state loading. It's really important that you use the correct Bravo tags here as the name of your frames. Now for my loading animation, I've actually used a Lottie file, which Bravo does support. So I downloaded the Lottie plugin and here you can just search for any kind of animation you want. In this case, I wanted a loading state and I chose one of these and I put it into my frame. Now it's really important that you wrap any of your content into a container. So in this case, I have sort of wrapped this Lottie animation into this container, which I've made sure is called loading state loading. Now, anytime there is a period of loading in my app, which I've clicked through my app and it actually all loads pretty instantly. <laughs> so I don't have this loading state actually showing for now, but if I added more data or maybe more pages and my app started to get a bit more complex, then maybe there would be this loading state that I would need. So anytime data data or pages would load in my Bravo app, then you would actually get this Lottie animation. I've also created an error state. I wanted to make sure that there was a page that in case there was a 404 or for some reason they clicked on something and it didn't work in the app, I wanna make sure I have a good user experience for this and they don't just get a dead end. So I created this page and I made sure to give it the tag of state error and then in particular i wanted this to be the error state if there was an issue on the home page so the home page just as a reminder is this featured page which i've labeled as the home page and if for some reason there was an issue or an error with loading any content on this page or for some reason this page wouldn't load then this would be the specific error state page that would be shown instead of the home page so you want to make sure that the page name here in your Bravo tag, in this case, mine is home, matches whichever page you want this to be the error state for. Now, earlier I showed you that I added a submission form where people could actually submit a kombucha app for review. So let me show you how I set that up. Again, I've created a new page here in Figma and I've labeled it submit. Then I've made sure that all of my content for this page is wrapped inside a container. Again, really important that you wrap the content inside containers for Bravo. I've then created some input fields here and 
these are basically rectangles with text on them. But in order to turn these into an input field that Bravo would actually recognize, I need to use the correct input field tag. To do this, you wanna make sure that you have some placeholder text here. And this will be the text field that the user will type into. So if they clicked on this, I would want them to type in you know, the brand of the kombucha that they wanna submit. And so with this text field selected, over here in the layers panel, I've actually given this the tag of component input dash text. This tells Bravo that this is an input field where a user can tap into and input their own custom text. Now I've also labeled this particular input field brand input because I have three different input fields here. I have one for submitting a brand, a flavor, and then an email address. And I need to make sure that I sync and connect up the right data points later on. So I need to know that this text input field is for brand, this one is for flavor, and this one is for email. So you can see for each of these, if I click on the text input, each of them has the component input text tag and I've also labeled them accordingly. So this one is called flavor input and then this one is called email input. I've also added a submit button here at the bottom and this has the tag of action submit telling Bravo that when a user clicks on this button or taps on this button we are submitting this as an action. You can also have different states of a button. So down here, I actually have this button as a component and I have two states. I have both the sort of default resting state and the press state. And you can define this again by using different Bravo tags. So this one I've labeled state pressed and then this one is state default. Before we preview this, we need to set up a database for our data to actually go and be stored and collected. So I'm gonna do that using Airtable. Over in Airtable, I've created a new sheet here called kombucha submissions. And I've given this sheet three different columns to match the corresponding data that we wanna collect. Once you've set up your Airtable file, head on over to Bravo Studio and click on data library. This is where we're gonna add our data sheet. Now, when you do this for the first time, you wanna click on new collection to create a new data table. In this case, I'm doing Airtable. And the first thing it's gonna ask is for your Airtable share link. You can find this really easily by going into your Airtable, click on share, select base, not workspace. We're gonna choose the base one. And then here in this pink field, you're gonna copy this share link and then paste it over into Bravo. After clicking on continue, it's then going to ask for your API key. And to find this, you want to go to your account overview in Airtable. And then it's going to show you the API key down here. You just want to copy that and then again, paste it over into Bravo. Bravo will then process it for a couple of seconds and set up your sheet so it's now ready to use. Once you've linked your Airtable to Bravo, there's a few things we have to configure. So if I open up my kombucha submissions database, the first thing you want to do is make sure your request is set to post. This is because when a user inputs text into your input fields in your app, we want to post or like push that to our Airtable database. The other option you'll probably see here is get, and that's like pulling information from a database. That's exactly what I've done for the featured page and the favorites page where I have data sitting in a sheet and I'm actually pulling that or getting that and pushing it into the app. So this is the opposite where we actually want to collect information from our app and post it into the database. Now the next step is that we're gonna need to configure our headers, parameters, and body information. So under header, here it's gonna say authorization. And then on the right side, you wanna type in the word bearer and then post your API key over here. For parameters, this depends how many input fields you have. For me, I have three. I have brand, flavor, and email. And so I have typed those values in here on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, I've entered a placeholder value. Now, if you're using Airtable for the body, we're going to be using some JSON code. Now, don't freak out. Airtable gives you all of this information. To find this, head on over to your Airtable account. And then under help, you want to click on API documentation. Then select the data table that we're working with, in this case, my kombucha one. And now it's going to open up all the API information for this data table. I'm going to open kombucha submission table, then click on create records. And then over here, there is a little bit of JSON that we're going to copy and paste into Bravo. We're going to copy and paste 
some of this records information. Bravo can be pretty particular into how your brackets are set up and laid out. If you are a developer, you probably are familiar with this, but don't worry, Bravo has really detailed help documentation that actually calls out exactly the information that you need to copy and paste over. Once you've actually done that, your body JSON is gonna look something a little bit like this. The only thing you'll need to change is when you paste this in, you're gonna have some placeholder test content here, and you wanna change that to reflect the actual like input variable that you're collecting. So in this case, I'm collecting the brand, flavor, and email. And it's really important that you update this so that you're making the right sort of links and connections behind the scenes. You can copy and paste exactly this format, dollar sign, curly brackets, and then your input variable. Once you've done that, click on send to test that this will work. And in our case, it does. Woohoo! And here you're gonna see a list of the received data and you wanna select the ones that you wanna use. So in my case, I'm gonna select these three and you can kind of see a nice output of that over here in selected data. Now it's time to link this to our prototype. So I'm gonna head back on over to projects and I'm gonna select my kombucha app here. Then I'm gonna select my submit screen. This is where we wanna link the input fields to the data in Airtable. So here I have selected my Airtable kombucha submission sheet. I also have this set to post. And then now what I need to do is link the data to the specific exact input fields. So I know that my input fields live within this form container that I set up in Figma. And now if I scroll down here, you can see the input fields that we identified earlier in Figma. So here I have my email input, my flavor input, and my brand input. So you wanna select each of those and link it to the correct variable in Airtable. So we're gonna leave the content as is, we're just gonna change the content destination. So in this case, I'm posting it to kombucha submissions. And then in the drop down here, you should see those three different headings that we have in our Airtable file the brand flavor and email. So here for the email input one, I'm gonna make sure the content destination is email. For the flavor one, we've got it set to flavor. And for the brand one, I'm gonna make sure it is selected here to brand. So now we've binded our data from the Airtable to our Figma prototype via Bravo. Let's check it out on the Bravo app. Here I am on my submit screen in my Bravo app. I'm going to enter a brand name, my favorite flavor, and lastly, my email. Okay, now let's click on submit, and let's go and check out our Airtable form, and it is there immediately. Here, row 37, what I just typed in, good buzz, passion fruit, and my email address. So that is pretty cool. As soon as we interacted and inputted our data into our Bravo app, it immediately got posted to the Airtable. Now let's say that after a user submits a form, we wanna give them a nice pop-up that thanks them for their submission. So back on over in Figma, I've created a new frame that I've called pop, and I've given it the Bravo tag of page pop-up. Now this means that after a user has submitted a form, we're gonna set it so that this pop-up will automatically appear over top. And Bravo automatically adds a nice overlay behind the pop-up so you don't need to design that here in Figma. So all I've done is created this frame. I have also added this button and given it the tag of action close so that when a user taps on this button, it's going to close this pop-up. To make it that this pop-up appears after the user has submitted the form, we're gonna head on back on over to Bravo. And then back here on the page where we have our input form, down the bottom is an option here to set response actions. So here you can define what you want to happen on success of submitting the form and also on error. So on success, I'm telling Bravo to go to the page of pop that I set up. And I've also set up that on an error, I wanted to show an automatic sort of system alert and I've put some content in here. You can type whatever you like. So let's check that again on our Bravo app. Here's my input form, I'm gonna tap on submit. And now we have that lovely pop-up over top that thanks me for my submission. And now if I tap on close, it's going to close the pop-up. One other feature that I wanna show you is push notifications. So Bravo actually lets you configure and set up push notifications for your app if you want to. So to set that up, just open up your project and then over in notifications, here's where you can create any kind of push notifications that you might wanna send to your users. And to set this up, you are going to need to have 
have a OneSignal account. So you can configure that really, really easily here in Bravo. From these settings, you can also publish your app to the App Store. Bravo, of course, supports publishing both to Android and iOS. What I've just shown you is how you can use Figma and Bravo Studio to publish and create a real working app. Now, don't worry if you're not on Figma, Bravo also supports Adobe XD and they just recently launched their plugin for Adobe XD. So you can use it there easily as well. If all of this sounds really interesting and exciting to you and you wanna push yourself and your skills further using Bravo, Bravo is actually here to help support you become a brave expert. And now, what do I mean by that? Imagine that instead of handing off prototypes, you're now handing off real products. Or instead of working with engineers to bring your designs to life, you're now doing that completely on your own. Bravo is here to support you going from idea to final product. Maybe you're someone who's working with clients and you wanna go from concept to published app. If you wanna get started with Bravo or become a Bravo expert, Bravo has free courses that includes masterclasses, eBooks, step-by-step -step videos that help you become a Bravo designer. Let me know what you end up creating. I can't wait to see. Catch you in another video. Bye.